Ferrets under fire in Canada. Globalists eating bugs in Davos. And lesbian conservatives? 2024, off to the races. Donald Trump asks the $64,000 question. The Pope hopes hell is empty, but Amazon Prime begs to differ. And finally, after heavenly warnings from France, Portugal, and Japan, Catholics take to the street in a global war against demons. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Michael Matt. This is The Remnant Underground with a great bit of news before we get started tonight. I want to share with everybody. Everybody's talking about this. Judge rebukes Justin Trudeau for not justified use of emergencies act to break the trucker's convoy. Canadian court rules government was unreasonable when it used sweeping powers to block truckers protesting against COVID lockdowns. Took them a while, didn't Not they? exactly. I told you everybody's like the truckers lost, they got destroyed. I said give it time. Give it time. Okay. That human thing, that humanity yeah. thing won out once again and the poor little ferret now is in deep doo-doo up in Canada. Congratulations <laughs> to all our to all our friends up north of the border. This is fantastic news and we knew it was coming. And I want to remind you before we get started, don't forget uh, to like and share this video, regardless of which platform you might be watching us on tonight. Uh, Big Tech is having a field day. Uh, this is war. They're on the war path once again. And I really need to stress that, that we need you. I need you to like and share our videos manually now so that we can either beat the algorithms over at the infamous YouTube or just move everyone over to remnantnewspaper.com where our stuff is doing very well thanks to you. So, good news and bad tonight. Uh, Trump has won bigly in Iowa and in New Hampshire. No big surprise there. Uh, but I guess the big question everybody's feeling right now is what's actually going on? What, what, what is this? You know, is there actually even going to be a free election in this country or are they going to find some method, some ways, some means of stopping it once again? What, what, what say you, Madam Vice President? Well, I'm really confident we're going to win because we're going to cheat, okay? We're going to cheat. And we have so many different ways how we're going to accomplish that. So, uh, we're, we're, we're laughing because we really are ruled by morons in this brave new world. A brave new world now in which even your next cup of joe, your morning coffee, isn't necessarily safe. Basically, the coffee that we all drink... Um, emits between 15 and 20 ton of CO2 per ton of coffee. So we should all know that this is every time we drink coffee, we are basically putting CO2 into the atmosphere. <laughs> so let's review. Coffee now. Coffee is, coffee is bad. Thank you. Thank you very much, Walter. Uh, mm, it is hot, but there's nothing like a good cup of joe. Trying to get about five or six of these in in the afternoon today. Coffee is bad. Can't do that. Beef, of course. Bill Gates has told us beef is bad. we got to get rid of, the, rid of the burgers and the steaks. And now our poor friends up in Canada, for them, pizza ovens. Got to go. I want to talk about the terrible existential crisis to the entire universe, which, of course, is pizza ovens. I know that uh, Prime Minister Trudeau and his federal agency have launched an outright crusade against pizza ovens. They are, they started in Montreal, but we know that they will get out here to Vancouver. So Vancouverites who are locked in their homes and terrified of pizza ovens uh, should be at ease that Justin Trudeau will come to your rescue. Don't worry about your 100% uh, rent increase or the fact that you can't feed yourself. Justin Trudeau is spending your money going after pizza ovens here and everywhere, and he will not stop until this crisis is resolved. Oh man, this is so much fun. The, the, the globalist fatigue factor is through the roof, you know, and this guy, Justin Trudeau, the little ferret, of course, is one of Klaus Schwab's young globalist leaders. Maybe we can ask Klaus to send us a large roach pizza up to our friends in Canada anyway, with plenty of extra bed bugs on the side. Every bite you take Every single lunch with a crispy crunch, you will eat the box. Where, 
Where did you find that? Isn't that great? <laughs> Yeah, it's perfect. Ah, it's fantastic. <laughs> and we, we laugh, but only because the jokes tell themselves now. And this is the thing, friends. We're going to talk about this. And last week, we talked about this WHO pandemic preparedness treaty. Well, this week, we're going to be talking about it again. And next week, and we're going to keep on talking about it until everybody starts screaming about it. What they got in plan for us. What they got in mind for us. Because before... When you had Joe Biden, for example, coming out and talking about the patriotic duty to get the you-know-what, well, if this thing passes, there's not going to be any convincing. They're simply going to force it. You will not have a choice if you want to go see your kids or your grandkids or go see your mother in a nursing home or go take money out of the bank, right? Go vote. You're going to need to have the jab if this goes through. And you know what? Lo looking at all this... Looking at all this, I'm kind of tired. Aren't you kind of sick and tired of the staples of what conservatives are talking about on Fox News? I, I, I honestly could not care any less now about Hunter Biden's laptop, you know, when this is what's coming in the real world. I believe the time is right for an international treaty or other legally binding instrument to provide the framework for a more coherent and coordinated response to future epidemics. The global digital vaccine passport is the enforcement mechanism for this global governance platform that the WHO has. Like many countries, the European Union made significant investments in COVID-19 certificates to help people move around as safely as possible during the pandemic. Building on the success of the EU system, WHO is proud today to launch the Global Digital Health Certification Network. This QR code on your phone, you don't, as Tony had said, you don't move unless you, the WHO approves you moving. That's very similar to the social credit system that mm -hmm. communist China uses and imposes on their own people. We'll put a link down below. You can watch that. I mean, it's... Um... It's absolutely terrifying. And why no one's talking about it? Why the new and improved Fox News isn't talking about this every, every night? I'm not sure. You know, and the thing is, we're down here trying to apply the influence, whatever influence we possibly can, on the fact that the Pope, once again, Pope Francis, Team Francis over there in the Vatican, they are all in with what we just saw. These guys are all in with the coming pandemic preparedness treaty of Dr. Tedros and the WHO. What you're looking at right now on your screen is Dr. Tedros' own personal posting of a video on Facebook. He posted this personally, writing beneath it, quote, My team and I are so humbled and grateful for the Pope's support of our mission. Hashtag health for all. So let's get into this a little bit, friends. I think, I think progress is being made. But there's a long way to go, and there's a, there's a pretty scary year coming up. Everybody knows that. Election year. It's getting dicey, right? And everybody's talking about the politics. They're talking about the political war that's coming now in 2024. But tonight, I hope you'll join me <clears throat> in talking about something that I think is much more important, and that is the spiritual war of 2024. Because that's what it is, you know. It's a spiritual war. Donald Trump, the other night, uh, inadvertently asked a very probing question about this. Check this out. We're also very grateful to be endorsed by one of the nation's largest Catholic advocacy groups, Catholic Vote. It's called Catholic Vote. And I just want to thank them. They are incredible. Now, I don't know what it is with Catholics, but the FBI is going after Catholics. What is going? Who would? Why would any Catholic vote for a Democrat? You two. Anybody, any Catholic being harassed? Now, why would a Catholic think of it, what they're doing? I hear stories that are just horrible. Why would a Catholic be voting for Biden or a Democrat? Doesn't make sense. It's horrible. Now, do you know what, you know what the answer to the question is? I don't think Donald Trump does, but you do and I do, right? The answer is because the majority of Catholic voters in this country and around the world are simply not Catholic anymore. And this, friends, we've come to this point now. This is what so-called traditional Catholicism has been all about all along from the very beginning. Everything happening right now in the world, and much of it is scary and it's terrifying, right? Much of it is truly terrifying. But all of it is exactly what traditional, the traditional Catholic counter-revolution has been about from 
its inception from the very beginning. It was never just about the Mass. It was always about the war on Christian morality, the war on the Christian family, the war on God, the war now on life itself, the war on what's left of Western civilization. You see? We said that for so many times. People on Fox News or whatever, they're doing a great job. But what are they doing? They're chronicling the plane crash. They're telling you how it's crashing. But they don't have to, they don't have actually any serious answer to how you stop the plane from hitting the ground and blowing up. Because the answer is the spiritual answer that no one is eager or willing to talk about. Very few people are willing to talk about. And meanwhile, the, the, the demons are mobilizing all around us. We see them every night on, on TV. If we are worried about the rise of authoritarianism in this country, we are worried about potential rise of fascism in this country. If we're worried about our democracy falling to an authoritarian and potentially fascist form of government, the leader who is trying to do that is part of that equation. Mm -hmm. But people wanting that Correct. is a yeah. much mm -hmm. bigger part mm -hmm. of that That's equation. Right. Mm -hmm. And yes, Trumpism is sometimes what we call it. Mm -hmm. MAGA movement is probably a better way to do it. But there is an authoritarian mm -hmm. movement inside yes. Republican politics that isn't being bamboozled by Trump. Mm -hmm. They are pushing Trump That's to right. get more and more right. extreme. Like, I don't care what you think about Donald Trump, but when you look at what Rachel Maddow just said, and there are many others who are saying the same thing now, when they took over the violence in the streets over political elections of vilifying, demonizing the opposition as they're doing. Well, you know where this leads, right? To where it always leads, to where godless atheism always leads, historically speaking, to guillotines, to firing squads, to killing fields, to gas chambers, right? And it all starts now with this ongoing war against God, against religion. And that explains now the flagrant disregard for Christians, for Christianity, for Christian moral teachings, which is now on full display everywhere we look. <laughs> I'll give you an example. <clears throat> the other day, I flew Delta Airlines somewhere. Got on a plane, and I look up, back up the aisle from as I was putting my, my bag up in the overhead, and I see that at every single seat, it's a big plane, big plane, every single seat, those little screens on the backs of the seat in front of you, every single one had this on the screen. You see that? I've seen it before, but I've never seen it in every single seat like it now is in Delta Airline. You, know, you, you, you literally could not escape it. If you're sitting there as a little mom or dad with your little kids, daddy, mommy, what's that? <laughs> see, Delta Airlines doesn't care. And why don't they care? Because they're not afraid of offending Christians anymore because we've lost our identity almost completely. Why? Because Christianity, through the process of tearing it down and ecumenism and dialogue and everything else, Christianity has become a woke joke. I'm a Christian, but I'm totally not judgmental. I'm a Christian, but I totally don't believe any of the Bible's teachings on sexual morality. I'm a Christian, but I'm totally a feminist. Definitely a feminist. Oh, totes a feminist over here. Now, I know the Lutherans put that out. It's a fantastic bit, and it certainly applies to the Catholic Church. This is what Donald Trump is talking about. And with Francis at the helm and the Catholic Church with his synod on synodality, we're not going to offend anybody. We're just going to have conversations now. With that guy at the helm, this is going to get exponentially worse. Because why? Because Catholicism is the, the largest Christian denomination in the world, and it's just hoisting the white flag of surrender. You see? That's going to get much worse. involved in this campaign to affect change in this world. Be Yourself campaign means absolutely everything to me. I get to be myself, a non-binary person. I have the choice of the uniform, which is a massively big thing. It's so important. It's not about cancelling people. It's not about removing women or removing men. It's just about more inclusive language. Now, Tessie, uh, is this real? Did you have a chance to... Oh, unfortunately it is. Yeah, I snopsed it. You snopsed it? It's really, <laughs> yeah. it's really happening. I mean, a lot of people asking the same question. Holy cow! What is wrong with these people? I mean, obviously they just don't care. 
you know, they're looking at. I mean, they're they're over in the UK. So I mean, things in the UK. I'm so no, sorry, have gone absolutely insane. But what is this? This is basically what is it? Atlantic airline, Virgin Airlines. Virgin Airlines. Sorry, Virgin Atlantic. What is it? That's them saying in your face, Christians. Yeah, we know that you're not going to boycott Virgin Atlantic because you know why? Because you're not Christian enough anymore. You don't care. You're not going to fight back. They're confident of that. So, again, Donald Trump's question from the other night. Why would a Catholic be voting for Biden or a Democrat? Yes, Mr. President, it's because they're not Catholic anymore. We sat there, again, as Christians the world over, as in this country especially, we sat there and let them annihilate whole generations of little babies in the womb for 50 years. Well, guess what? Now we're the clumps of tissue in the womb of the New World Order. They're coming after us. And they're not coming after just our souls anymore. That's where it started, right? Now they're coming after our bodies. Now they're coming after our freedom. Now they're coming after our lives. I mean, you, 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 you're not supposed to talk about it, but you're aware of how many people are no longer with us, right? And how they're departing at a rapid rate of speed right now. They're coming after our lives. Is that going to wake us up? And then in the middle of all this, again, you have a pope who's positively, this is the supposedly the moral authority of the world, friends. The pope in Rome supposedly the vicar of Christ on earth. Well, he doesn't use that title anymore. But out there fixated on what? On calling people to repent? On to demanding people recognize and respect the Christian moral law? No. He's out there fixated on blessing gay unions. You start to see where we're at here then? And, and let's think about that for a little second. because something's being overlooked. And all this back and forth over over uh, fiducia supplicants. We're having conversations that we actually shouldn't be having. Do you realize that? We're having conversations in public with kids, with families, right? That we, in a normal world, should not be having. St. Paul, what does he tell us in, in Corinthians 5.12? He says that it is a shame even to speak of such things. Now, that, that, that's how I was raised when I was growing up. You didn't speak of such things. I was in the fifth grade when little Peter Belinsky whispered to me what the word gay meant because he was confused and we were all confused and you whispered about it because you didn't talk about such things in the middle 1970s. <laughs> well, think what we're doing right now, all of us, even if we're defending against what the Vatican is doing, we're falling into that trap, right? We're all talking about this. All the little kids of the world are hearing all about it now, how the Pope himself wants to bless this, bless these people. Not call them to repent, but just bless them. Because they want a blessing like anyone else. <laughs> and you got so-called conservative Catholics out there defending this decision to bless these guys, these couples, defending him every single day and taking people like us to task for questioning what's going on. Well, what this is, friends, is just a complete loss. We call it, at the conference, we call it of Catholic identity. What my father's generation called it was the census catholicus, the Catholic sense. It's completely gone. It's been obliterated, Mr. Trump, and that's why they're voting for Joe Biden. It's been obliterated, and that's why you have Catholic conservatives out there saying, oh, come on, man. So the Pope wants to, wants to bless these, uh, these homosexual guys. Hey, you know what? That's, that's great. Everybody needs a blessing. Meanwhile, little kids with the huge eyes and the big ears are trying to assimilate all this. What about them? What about their innocence? Does anybody care what's happening to them? Does anybody wonder about their ability to process discussions on perversion that for thousands of years meant the end of a civilization, right? When that type of perversion was approved of? Does anybody care that all of our little kids now are all up to date and up to, up to speed on this? And that the Pope himself is out there trying to bless this? 
Oh, no, 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 he's not blessing the sin. I get it, I get it. <laughs> I'm not blessing the sin, no. He's just blessing the people involved with it, the people committing the sin. Much different, much, much different. <laughs> and meanwhile, you know, even the good people are hopelessly and, dare I say, diabolically disoriented on this issue right now because there is no moral leadership coming out of Christianity, hardly at all, certainly not out of the, the highest echelons of the Catholic Church. There's nothing but confusion on this issue, right? Give me an example. I'm watching a clip the other day. A clip, Walter will throw it up on the screen, in fact. A clip on the Dinesh D'Souza show. He does a lot of good work. Now, I think Monica Crawley, who used to do a lot of work at Fox News, she was sitting in for Dinesh, and I happened to catch this clip, and she's going on and on about cultural Marxism, and she's doing a great job. Walter, can we just throw maybe a little bit of that, of that clip up? Yeah. We had Antonio Gramsci, an Italian Marxist, who, who came up with cultural Marxism, a way to infiltrate the West so that it would fall to communism. They had to infiltrate education, the church, media, the legal system, and the family. And what do we see today in America? All of these be cultural bedrock institutions are very badly damaged with Marxist ideologies. So I'm looking at Monica Crawley on the Dinesh D'Souza show. I'm like, wow, this is great. They're getting into, finally, finally, they're getting into what really, really matters. You know, she even, in fact, gets into the role that Pope Francis is playing with this cultural Marxism. Just this week, the Pope sitting at the Vatican in Rome said he was going to bless or allow priests to bless same-sex couples, right? So he is a communist out of Argentina. He's sitting at the top of the Roman Catholic Church. So there's a lot of this, and it's not just Catholic Church, it's Protestant churches, it's synagogues, it is across the board. And, and what to do about it? Well, the lady who produced, who wrote the book and who produced the film, evidently, she suggests that we watch the trailer for this new movie. Right, go to beneathsheepsclothing.movie and watch the trailer. Okay, so I did. I clicked on the link that she had provided to watch the trailer. And this is what popped up first on her website. So I'm Jamie Michelle. I'm the founder and president of Gays Against Groomers. This is Sasha, the executive director. Also happens to be my fiance. <laughs> we saw the trailer and I was absolutely blown away. Like blown a, lo away. a lot of times these things do not grab my attention or hold it for sure. And I saw that and I was just left wanting more. And I'm so excited for the full thing to come out. Now, I, I, I get it. I'm not blaming these two poor souls, these two lost sheep. Uh, who never had any moral direction, certainly not from our church, and now they think of themselves as conservatives and all of this. But here's the problem, friends, without, you know, getting too much into the weeds here. It's obvious, should be very obvious. So here you have a, like, an excellent podcast with a great new documentary, and this is how they're promoting it. And the problem with this is, and I don't mean to tear them down, I'm, obviously they're trying to do good work, the people that produce this video, but the problem is, and this is what's being missed, if the Christian moral law, Christianity, the moral law of God, the law of nature, right? If it is not upheld, we're just playing games here. And the, and the political downward spiral into hell will continue unabated. You see? See how this works? Because, that, again, that, that, that particular sin... That's the one that always has been the hallmark for the final days, the last stages of a given civilization in total moral collapse. And that's where we are. So what are we going to do? Well, you know me, I always stay engaged, stay engaged in politics wherever, wherever you possibly can. Talking about Donald Trump right now, I don't know if this year what's going to happen, if it's the vote for the lesser of two evils, or if it's just simply a vote in self-defense to try to get somebody who's maybe going to prevent really weird, evil, demonic people from trying to eat our children. It might just be a vote for self-defense. I don't know. We're going to find out what's going on. But a lot of you guys, a lot of good people, get really upset. You say, forget Donald Trump. He's soft on abortion. He's soft on the LGBT thing and all that. Forget him. Right? True. But whose fault is that? I mean, do you remember six months into his papacy, his pontificate, Pope Francis was out there just shocking the world, sent shockwaves all throughout the Catholic Church with the publication of his remarks that the church has grown, you remember this, obsessed 
with abortion. You see that, that headline there. And there were corresponding news reports on that at the time. Barely six months into his papacy, Pope Francis triggered a controversy with his non-conservative vision for an inclusive church. In a remarkable interview published in 16 countries, he warned that the Catholic Church's moral structure might fall like a house of cards if it doesn't balance its divisive rules about abortion, gays and contraception with the greater need to make it a merciful, more welcoming place for all. And the result of that, friends, and this is where, again, you have the census catholic said if you've been a traditional Catholic long enough, you realize this has been their MO all along to send these incredibly conflicting, misleading, confusing messages to the world. And guess what? Politicians such as a guy like Donald Trump, they've been getting the message ever since. Don't, don't obsess over abortion, Donald. You saw what it did at the midterms. Come on, man. Even the Pope was saying don't obsess over abortion. Right? So whose fault is this? Do you see why? We're always talking about the Pope down here because he's influencing everything that's happening in the world right now. You know? Trump started going soft on the LGBT thing, right? Even at the end of the, the first term. Right? He did that. <laughs> Do you blame him? If the person is homosexual, they have the right to stay in the family. They are children of God. They have the right to family. They can't be left from the family to anyone, nor make life impossible for that person. What we have to do is a civil law of civil convivence. They have the right to stay covered legally. I defend this. Do you actually blame Donald Trump for not taking the moral hard line on that one? You see how this works? Yeah, what, are you, what are you, Donald Trump? What are you, more Catholic than the Pope? Now back off the moral issues. This is the problem, friends. Everyone, from the Pope on down, is sending that message that the, the old moral law of Christendom, the moral law of God is rigid and inflexible and it's time for us to be tolerant and just to accompany people everywhere. That's what we do. Well, this is just soft apostasy, friends. Francis cares much more about pushing the diversity, equity, and inclusion agenda right now than he does about reasserting the importance of following the Ten Commandments, for example. Right? Or when's the last time you saw Pope Francis say anything about the Ten Commandments? When's the last time you saw Pope Francis tell the world that if they don't repent and come back to Christ, come back to truth, they're going to go to hell? They risk everlasting... When's the last time you saw that? Yeah, who cares about that? Global warming is what we care about now. The Pope has written, what, two, three encyclicals and letters on that, on climate change. That's what everybody thinks. That's what, they, that's what he's known for. Well, let me ask you this. How many documents has Francis written on everlasting damnation and the fires of hell? <laughs> Just the opposite, right? A few days ago, he said that he kind of hopes hell... Hell's empty, right? He thinks hell's empty. Maybe it might be. He sure hopes it is. This is the guy, again, as we said last time, who supposedly consecrated Russia to the Immaculate Heart of Mary, according to Our Lady of Fatima, who showed a vision of hell to the little seers, remember? And it was teeming with the souls of the damned. So how seriously do you think we should take Francis's consecration of Ukraine and Russia, according to, the, to Our Lady of Fatima's wishes? Really, how seriously? So while we got the Pope out there saying, well, gee, I sure hope the hmm, hell is empty. <laughs> you got Amazon Prime now, I just saw this week. They're coming out and they're, they're spoon-feeding Luciferian crap into the minds and souls of our children. Like this. Lucifer was one of these angels. He was a dreamer with fantastical ideas for all of creation. But he was seen as a troublemaker by the elders of heaven. From the dust of earth they created Adam and Lilith, equals as the first of mankind. But despite this, Adam demanded control and Lilith refused to submit to his will. She fled the garden, empowering demonkind with her voice and her songs. And as the numbers of hell grew, so did its power. And her dream was passed down to their precious daughter, the princess of hell. Now, when I was a kid in Catholic schools, St. John's University used to provide these little film strips and we'd watch what would be uh, indoctrination in the doctrine of the faith, right? The stories of saints, theological points, 
made for children, right? So what you're looking at there, what you saw there, is sort of the inverse, the diabolical inverse of that, right? They're literally catechizing our children on Amazon Prime and Netflix and everywhere else, while the Pope is blessing gay people. And friends, I'll close on this. It's not as if we weren't warned. For example, all my life, I knew that this was coming. None of this is a surprise. And by this, I mean the one world government, the one world religion. How did I know that that was coming? I would say it's for the same reason that this <laughs> is on my desk. Because if you were paying attention, and Catholics were for a long time over the past, the course of the past hundred years, many Catholics were paying attention because they realized fully that we were warned that this day is coming. On September number 19th, 1846, two French shepherd children, Melanie Clavette and Maximin Girard, encountered a beautiful lady sitting on a rock and weeping high in the French Alps at a place called La Salette. She told them that the reason for her sadness was the betrayal of her son and neglect of his holy church throughout the world. The lady's message and accompanying secrets include such apocalyptic warnings of the unleashing of the powers of hell all throughout the world. The church officially approved the apparition of Our Lady of La Salette and Pope Leo XIII erected a basilica on the very spot where she had appeared, some six miles from the nearest mountain village. Now, whatever you think of Marian apparitions, and some of you Protestant folks out there, you think we worship the, the Mother of God. Of course, that's nonsense. We don't worship the Mother of God. You think we worship statues. That's nonsense. We don't worship statues. We'll get into that in another show. But whatever you think of Marian apparitions, now I'm, I happen to be German. Father is very German. And so I'm naturally skeptical about that sort of thing. Nevertheless, here's the thing. Everything that we're living through right now was foretold. And nothing happening today comes as any surprise to traditional Catholics again. Over the years, in fact, I've made many pilgrimages and take, taken groups to these places uh, to see what was really going on there, the places of apparition. I've read the dusty old books. I've read the transcripts of what the seers had said, and what was written down by Catholic priests. You know what I mean? They're not written down by some the milk lady or the matchmaker lady, but by priests assigned by the bishops to find out what was going on, extremely intelligent men who would try to discern and find out if there was something actually going on here. And they're writing all this stuff down a hundred years ago or more. So you can deny apparitions. You can say, hey, you know what? Private revelation, Catholics don't have to believe it. True enough. But that doesn't answer the question. How did these little shepherd children, how did they come up with this stuff? How did they know that these things were coming? I mean, look at this. 1846, the church will be eclipsed. One will not know which is the true Pope. The holy sacrifice will cease to be offered in churches. Now, if this is a hoax, how did those little children know that Rome would eventually lose the faith, as was predicted well over 100 years ago at La Salette? She said that God is going to strike in a manner without precedent. Woe to the inhabitants of earth. God is going to exhaust his wrath. She said that society is on the eve of the most terrible scourges. One must expect to be ruled with an iron rod and to drink the chalice of the wrath of God. Lucifer, she said, with a great number of demons will be unleashed from hell and they will abolish the faith. The church will be delivered over to great persecutions. This will be the time of darkness. The church will have a frightful crisis. She said civil and ecclesiastical powers would be abolished. She said that all order and all justice would be trampled underfoot. One will see only homicides, hatred, jealousy, lying, and discord, without love for country, without love for family. She predicted that civil rulers will have one same design, which will be to abolish and to make disappear all religious principle in order to make room for materialism, atheism, spiritualism, and all kinds of vices. She said the wicked will deploy all their malice 
They will kill themselves. They will massacre themselves mutually. She said Rome will lose the faith and become the seat of the Antichrist. Now that was La Salette. Now, fast forward 80 years. Let's go to Fatima, Portugal. The year is 1917. Again, three little shepherd kids claimed that they had been told by a beautiful lady that nations would be annihilated, evil fashions will be introduced, great war was coming, Satan would wage a final battle against marriage and the family, exactly as is happening today. Again, I went to Fatima to make sure. I went there to check it out. Now, I've been to Fatima several times. And what comes out, again, is that some of the greatest intellects, priests, popes in Europe, absolutely believe something had happened there. They made feast days, Lady of Fatima feast day. They made pilgrimages. Every single pope, including Francis, pilgrimed, journeyed all the way to this little town in Fatima because something happened there. The church put her full authority behind it, saying, yes, something happened here. <laughs> So in 1917, here's what the lady said. If people do not stop offending God, Russia will spread errors throughout the world. The good will be martyred. Several nations annihilated. Now, <clears throat> let's move on a little bit. 50 years after that, our lady came once again, this time to Japan, a place called Akita. And there she warned, this, is where, this one is terrifying, because it's like Our Lady is getting more adamant. At La Salette, she's talking about the spiritual war. At Fatima, she's talking about the annihilation of nations, right? She comes to, to Akita, and she says there's going to be massive civil war right at the heart of Christ's church. Cardinal against cardinal, bishop against bishop. Now again, I'm not a Medjugorje guy. I'm not talking about stuff that hasn't been fully approved, right? And again, I repeat, I'm German, so I'm, naturally dis I'm not naturally disposed to just jumping into every apparition and saying, yeah, it's got to be true. Some of them are, are, are crazy. They're not, they're not. They're fake, right? So I needed to make sure that in the case of Akita, that it was true. And so Walter and I, once again, went to Japan to see what, what could be seen. And guess what? That apparition was fully approved by the Catholic Church at the time. After 11 years of investigation, Bishop John Ito, then ordinary of the Diocese of Niigata, officially declared the events regarding the statue and the messages delivered to Sister Agnes Sasagawa to be of supernatural origin. So what's my point? The point is we've been warned. We've been warned of a spiritual war against the powers of hell. It's not just a political war. That's why I started off tonight's show. Yeah, 2024 is all about politics. But somebody somewhere the adults have got to come back in the room and say, man, we are up against principalities and powers. We have to do more to bring spiritual weaponry back into this fight, back into this war, or we're going to lose. You know, the prophesied chastisement that I'm talking about, it's all about what? It's all about massive loss of faith, right? Which will leave the world defenseless against the forces of outright evil. That's what we're talking about. That's what we're seeing right now. And we're going to fight that with politics? <laughs> that's it? We're going to vote Republican? Demons versus the Republican Party? You think that's going to, that's going to work out okay? Friends, it should, it should be obvious. And again, this is what traditional Catholicism has strived over the years to do. We're staying engaged. We live in this world. This is the world in which we live. We are traditional Catholics. But we also <laughs> stress that you can't do this without the spiritual weaponry. We've got to become, in other words, soldiers of Jesus Christ once again. And by that I mean proud soldiers of Jesus Christ, like the Cristeros, like the Vandeans, proudly wearing the Sacred Heart of Jesus, proudly going into battle for Christ the King, right? 
And this is happening already where people are, are, are coming to realize that. So I, I want to end this show by saying, don't you dare lose hope. You know, stay engaged in politics, of course. Follow the lead of great men. You know, great, a great guy like Hilaire Belloc, who <laughs> on, the, on the day that he was... He was running for office. He holds holds up his rosary, and he says to the opposition party, "This, this, to me, this is a, a, a such a supremely Catholic moment that it's something we can all think about as we go now into this political year." He holds up his rosary to the opposition party, and he says, "Gentlemen, I am a Catholic. As far as possible, I go to mass every day. This is a rosary. As far as possible, I kneel down and tell these beads every day." If you reject me on the account of my religion, I shall thank God that he has spared me the indignity of being your representative. You feel that? Now that, friends, that is Catholic. That's what we have to get back to. That's what we have to become again, Catholic. And again, there's so many ways of doing that. We're talking about United the Clans all the time, of course. In Chart, France, in a few months, 20,000 are going to march once again. Cardinal, Cardinal Gerhard Muller is going to be saying the Mass at Notre Dame de Chart, the, the magnificent cathedral of Europe, most magnificent cathedral in Europe, in honor of the kingship of Jesus Christ. And he's saying basically the same thing. We are Catholic. And if that offends you, pound sand. That's what we have to get back to, friends. And as I say, this is happening. I just saw a clip the other day. This is happening in Poland recently. If you look up on your screen here, look at this. Look at this. This is absolutely amazing, friends. Look at all these Catholic men, Catholic priests, proudly in the streets, being Catholic. Here, friends, this, friends, is the answer. Bring the faith of our fathers back into the streets. Stop being ashamed of it. Bring it back into the streets. Bring it back into the public square. Bring it back into politics. Bring it back into your homes. <laughs> I'm sorry. If Pope Francis doesn't like it, well, God wills it. And it's time, friends, it's time, men of Christendom, right? To tell Team Francis and the rest of the globalist cabal to go back to hell from whence they came. And I would suggest that we spend 2024 preparing for this next election doing just that with this in our hands. I hope you join me. Thanks very much. I'm Michael Matt. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next week.